Hey guys, well, I just added an alternator to my homemade gas compressor. Now, I built the compressor last year, and it's just built from scrap parts, and, and the engine was actually a free find. So what I've done now is I've just added an alternator to it. And the alternator is just a GM. It's an early 70s alternator. It does not have a built-in regulator. So I can then um, use it for arc welding or for running power tools. So this setup worked perfectly because I'm using the air compressor's pulley, which is larger than the dry pulley on the engine. So I've increased the ratio, and now I can spin the alternator up to higher RPMs, which you want to uh, get about 3,500 RPMs or so uh, on the alternator. So the engine can run still uh, basically just off idle, and I'll still be able to use the alternator to So the compressor has a electromagnetic clutch so all I have to do is connect 12 volts and then it engages the compressor right now it's not connected up to a battery I just have to put a battery on here pretty simple and then a switch and then you can just turn on the air compressor and it works through this pressure switch here so the pressure switch is is set for 125 pounds so the clutch will then cut out at 125 pounds so we won't overfill the air tank so I don't know how many horsepower the engine is. I'm guessing it's an eight horsepower, um, but I'd have to do a little research. Maybe someone out there knows exactly what it is. It's an older Briggs. With this alternator here, I'm actually self-energizing it, and it's pretty easy to do that. So I'm gonna fire it up, and then I'm gonna show you it running some power tools, try to strike an arc, and let's fire it up. started to energize. Okay, so there's our bolt, it's 55 volts, and I'll just turn it up a little bit, and see what we can get out of it. So 65 volts.
the, the wiring here is pretty simple. I'm actually self-energizing this alternator. So I'm using the field contact here, and then I'm also using the output positive. So they go up to the switches here. Then there's a resistor here. The resistor is to uh, sort of lessen the field strength in the alternator so it doesn't burn the thing out. So that's the way I've, I've set it up. I've noticed that it's better to actually put a resistor on between the field and the output voltage. It actually makes it run uh, a little better. It doesn't load down the engine as much and it doesn't overheat the alternator. So I have two switches here. So basically this switch here connects to the resistor. And if it doesn't start with that switch with the resistor connected, I can then hit this switch and that switch then directly hooks the output positive from the alternator to the field. So I only have to do that for a split second and then switch that one off and then it'll be running through the resistor. And it works perfectly. So unfortunately with this alternator, the welding capability is pretty limited. It, the alternator is not large enough uh, to actually weld with anything larger than 1 16th inch rods. So it will, it will do small welds. Uh, so all you have to do is just hook a pair of jumper cables, one to the output positive, and then one to the chassis of the alternator, so the ground. And then there you go, you put your uh, ground onto the workpiece, and then you can put your rod into your other pair of jumper cables, the other end. So you could basically use one pair of jumper cables if you want, and you can just put the rod in there, and away you go. I have two pairs because I use this one uh, for welding sometimes with homemade welders because it's a little better insulated. So now I have a air compressor, generator, and arc welder all in one. Well, that's the homemade air compressor, generator, arc welder. Thank you for watching.